Wow. That's a mess in the back. Well, that's just, I mean, what are you going to do, man? We do this for a living. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just how it is, man. It's, it's what we do. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show. That's right. How's everybody doing? Hope everyone's doing wonderful. I'm going to say yes. Everybody's like, yeah, what's up? Yeah. Howdy from Louisiana. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, what's up? Oh, you know what? I, I was just thinking about this. I, so I was sitting here and I was like, there was one more thing I needed to do to get ready for the show. And that was post up, uh, add the Facebook. Yes. Into, clean Wire Club. Yeah. Clean, 12 Volt Clean Wire Club into my feed. Yep. So that I could show the 12 Volt Clean Wire uh, yeah. of the week. Hey, guys, uh, let's just get it over with. It's the beginning of the show. If you have questions, go ahead and start like getting those queued up. Fernando's going to read through those and, and get them going. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi from Brazil. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Um, uh, did you see how we do installs in the cold? Yes, Danny. Thank Where? you so much. Danny sent me a picture oh, of, really? of them putting a backup camera in the snow. It was hilarious. Uh -huh. um, thank you for 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 giving me, yes. giving me that Good laugh. Uh, what's up from Louisiana? Check it in. Uh, what's up, guys? You excited for the Pro Bowl being in Vegas during the same time? Maybe yes. Fernando might run into, yeah, Lockett from the sea. Other, yeah, yeah, other. Tyler. Yeah, Tyler Lockett. Sure. Yes. Um, um, I'm gonna play there, so yes, I'm gonna be there. I mean, you know, I'm sure they're all staying at the where are we the Paris. I mean, that's We're where I would stay. Yes. Because... Uh, Rockford T3, six and a half, so four days. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Let me know how you like those. Evening, gents. Hello from West Texas. What up? Uh, hi, guys. How do you narrow down static after installing installation of head unit? Um, I don't know if we ever have that problem. I mean, I, I get what you... I, I mean, I would start with the RCAs if you have them. If you don't static. have RCAs, um, see, static can be caused by a multitude of different things. Like spark, spark plug wires can cause static, uh, bad ground, loose ground, and not necessarily on the radio. Somewhere else in the car that is is causing, uh, and something that the radio is running by or the RCAs are running by. There's <laughs> there's all kinds of things that it can be along with just being a bad antenna. So. Man, just just start somewhere, I guess, would be the best way to do it. Uh, is ARC a good audio brand? Yes. Cool. Yes, it's actually an exceptional audio brand, to say the least. Uh, big fans of the show. Uh, we've done a couple videos with Brian showing us his cars. We're going to be hanging out with Brian next, this, later this week, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, greetings from California. Hi from Calgary. What's happening, N? From Calgary, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's just Ed. You sure are bright. Is it too bright? I mean, we could turn it down if it is. If it's too bright, hang on. I was going to say, just, I'm, I'm thinking just... just turn that. Just, no, no, just loosen it and then turn it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. How about now? I mean, yeah. How you like me now? Yeah, that looks better. Sure, we'll go with that. Oh, wow. Way better? No. No, I don't know. The There's so much light in here now; it's ridiculous. So it's it's hard to. It's a little bright. Oh yeah, okay, we so. have to start like using like sunglasses. Sun, over sunglasses. Here, I guess. Well, I mean, I can't see the clock, so I got to squint to see the clock anymore. Yeah, it's like yeah. See that? Can't see. So, all right, go ahead and get your questions in, and Fernando will start to uh, dig through those. Uh, in the meantime, hey, we do this Facebook page, Twelve Oakland Wire Club. Some of you guys are in it. Some of you guys have heard of it. Let's head over here to Dean's laptop is this button right here and today we have this bing 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 who is known for this is his thing like bing is like the this guy, is his personal car right i know but like bing's specialty yes. is putting things in the uh the spare tire well like yep. that yeah um so this is his personal car he did an awesome job with that got a bunch of moscone and uh illusion so this is a full orca build for sure very yeah. sexy yeah oh i love um, it you know, he put a bunch cool. of pictures up in there also. And then you'll see this sponsor. This is being brought to you by the, the fine folks at Wire Care. If you would like to get some custom-made shrink wrap, tech flex, 
whatever you need for your install as far as Fan like rolls. to pretty up your yes. wiring and whatnot. Uh, head over to wirecare.com. Okay, so this isn't just for 12 volt. Okay, so like they have all the tech flex. Like they have fireproof tech flex. They have chemical. Tech so they flex. they also have like dodge connectors. All those they. Yeah, they have a lot of stuff. So if anything, just head over to their website and check them out. See if there's anything <laughs> there that, that might be of interest to you. And if it is, use the code coupon code 12, 12VCWC. That's 12 Volt Clean Wire Club or 12VCWC yeah. at checkout, and you'll get free shipping uh, in the continental U.S. So that's pretty pretty good deal. Yes. Um, also, they have like a like, you know desk, you know power outlets and all that stuff it's awesome it is pretty awesome yeah all right so uh i'm just gonna move on yeah i had to get rid of that uh pop-up that we just got so i got rid of it already that was weird what's up guys are you excited i already answered that one i'm sorry that's okay you know you were were doing the thing i know i'm just trying to look ah here you go angel put in a special order to wire care today free shipping very nice there you go very cool um, so while you're getting ready to put that up, go ahead. Uh, I'll pull up the first, that guy right there, Gladen. Gladen is going to be the first sponsor of the show. Um, so if you're looking for some amazing speakers, not just like the one cool thing about Gladen, um, like most manufacturers, I should say, because it's, it's not just special to them, but, uh, Gladen has a plethora of speakers to choose from. So anywhere from mild in the m line all the way up to the aerospace uh at his favorite speakers the aerospace right there so there there's a ton of to choose from so there again as we say before head over to their web page do a little digging see if there's something there that's interesting to you and if it is maybe give it a shot that's yeah. all we ask we just want you to go over there uh moscone-america.com i know it's like wait what you said gladen it's it's going gladen Moscone Glade. You know, it's two and one. Look at that. Uh, Okay, give me something. Uh, Did you guys get more toolboxes? As a matter of fact, yes. We're in the process of rebuilding the install bay, all like the whole install bay. Um, The the cabinets that you can see, those cabinets right there that are behind me. Um, We took down all the wood cabinets that are in the in here. So like all the. You know, if you, you guys have all watched the video and there's all the wood cabinets with like all the totes and stuff on, those are all gone. Um, so I ordered all new cabinets for everything. We extended these down more. We put lighting on those. There's lighting on these that we have off so you don't go blind. Um, whole new thing here. And these two right here behind me, because there's two behind there that are already in place. And there's two more here. And then that third one right there, those are all going to go over here. However, um, we got a car here that's is, is way more work than we have time to get this stuff done on. So right now, uh, last week was a mess. We had some a couple days where we actually had like three or four hours that we could work to get these up. Uh, Mary Lou came by and gave us a hand, gave us a hand. Yes. Uh, but then we had to clean everything up, put it all back on the shelf so that we could work on this car. So hopefully, when we get back from Knowledge Fest, we'll be able to get everything in place and then. Uh, after that, we're, anything that is wood, we're going to just paint that color gray so it looks really nice. Yes. We'll give you a tour. So That is correct. But yes, nothing like a bunch of toolboxes to make everyone feel happy. All right, give me another one. All right. Hey. Doggy Fresh in the house. What's up? Yes, we're trying to be fancy. Actually, I'm just trying to change it up a little bit because I'm tired of looking at the same four walls. So I'm going to be looking at the same four walls, just hopefully prettier. Right, right, yeah. Getting ready for Master Tech Expo. Yes, yes. we have to get ready for Knowledge Fest first. Yeah, one thing at a time. So yeah, okay. Knowledge Fest first. Actually, you know, it's funny you say that, but no, the reality is we're doing both at the same time. Uh, Master Tech Expo is coming up. The Clean Wire Challenge is coming up. Uh, that is being brought to you by. So here's the funny part. Um, HKI, which Dougie Fresh is part of, uh, they do Ground Zero and Sound Digital. Uh-huh. So we, we, we like got all the, all the corp, all the brands that have parent companies. Uh-huh. So like HKI, Electromedia and uh, Orca, two of those companies Doug has worked for. 
<laughs> but uh, so, no, I, I talked to Rob Wimpy at Electro Media today and we took care of all the stuff that they're going to send us. Also, Stinger is a, is a, you know, we got all the Stinger wire yeah. coming. So, no, I've been doing both double duty and then trying to just get everything done. Let's turn that off. I just realized that was on. All right. So, uh, what are some of the good router bits you suggest for a starter set? I'm just about done with my router station table. Um, all right. So, man, Mobile Solutions uh, is where I get my bits. And hold on, let me see if I can let me see if I can get to my favorite bit. I'll sh I'll I'll give you one. Really. Yeah, because I have a favorite bit. I, I do have a favorite bit. Um, where did, and it, it's like store. Right? Yeah. Router bits. There it is. Oh, hey, look at that. It was right there in the front. Very nice. Um. All right. Ooh. Oh, no. What? I'm brown again. You're brown again? Yes. Oh, it's because I'm really white. Actually, it's because this light is really hitting me, and it's it's leaving you out. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna pull this up. So spiral, spiral, spiral fluted router bits are kind of like I love these things. Um, the, the one I'm this is my favorite right here. This is a flush trim quad bearing quarter inch spiral cut bit. All right, this is it right here. If nothing else. All the other bits are just fancy fun and whatever. This is a production bit. This is the bit that you're going to use to trim uh, brackets, flush panels. Uh, if you're going to do templates, you're going to be using that bit. Um, that's the bit right there. Buy one of those. Take care of it. But that 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 bit lives right there in that router. That that one. That that bit never comes out of there until ready to change it, and that's it. Yes, all the wire has been shipped from MasterTech, Jeff. All the wire has been shipped. We discussed heat shrink is not. I know. That's okay. We're getting it from somewhere else. It's all right. Yeah. But no, he sent me a picture of the pallet, so it, it made it there. So Stinger Stinger's really hooking us up with some wire for this, so that's yes. a pretty awesome. But, you know, whatever. I guess that's part of the sponsor. So pretty awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks. See you soon. Miss yeah, you, buddy. Sure. All right, go ahead. Give me the next one. The next one. Question for you guys. Do you always use a relay when turning on more than one amp or when do you decide to relay? Oh, that's a good question because a lot of these new amplifiers don't draw any current on the remote turn on. Like they draw like 300 milliamps, which is like with 12 volts. So no, we don't use a relay that often anymore. And actually if the amplifier is not hardened to it, uh, you could do some damage by having that happen, because um, when the relay turns on, if you don't, you know, if you just have a naked relay without a diode on it, then that's a, you know, diode. Anyways, uh, you could backfeed into the amplifier or into other amplifiers. So, I mean, if you're doing like five or six amplifiers, yes, but two amplifiers, even three, I don't even worry about it anymore. Plus, a lot of times when we're doing multi amplifiers. Um, we're using a DSP, which has an in and an out, or yeah. like a other device that has an in and an out. But um, we found our tray of relays the other day when we were pulling all the stuff off the shelf. Fernando goes, oh, look, we still have a tray of relays because we really haven't used them all that often. Um, the one thing I do use it for is sometimes when we're, like when we do the Chrysler Amp Pro. Yeah. Um, Hi, Chris. We, we have been using it on those, but I think they've done a revision and, and we don't need it anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys can't help but look good. Hmm. If you were here, we'd look better. Just saying. <laughs> right? I don't know. Can't wait to see you, man. Hi. Can't wait to see you. For just your daily driver, Kenwood, Internal DSP, or Helix DSP? Hi. Well, okay. So this is a fair question. Let's think about it for a minute. All right. Okay. Your daily driver. Mm -hmm. Okay. That means it's, it's more than likely the car you're going to spend the most amount of time in, right? I mean, it's your daily driver. It's your yes, daily driver. So you're going to spend eight or nine hours and go all crazy in it. Why would you not want the best in there? I mean, uh -huh. I get it because it's it might be a beater and whatnot. But I also look at it like if I'm spending all my time in this thing. I mean, the car that I'm I drive on the weekends yeah. that I might put an hour, two hours. That doesn't seem like why would that have to get all the cool stuff? To me, I would want my beater to have my, my banging system in it. 
Yeah. If it was me, you're yeah. doing great today, Elias. You're yeah. doing great. Uh, Dean, suggestions. I don't have a router table, but have a handheld router. Need to do a round over on an ABS amp rack. Um, that's a good way to lose a finger. Oof. Just saying. Um, <laughs> so you could cut a hole in a piece of plywood and mount your router to it and put it on top of a trash can, you know, kind of like to do that thing. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that in a pinch, you know, that's, that'll work. Um, but if it's a handheld, I mean, if you have some quarter inch extra wood, just, you know, a lot of the handhelds, a little tiny, like the ones we have right there behind my head, those, um, they have a little, they have a clear plastic piece on it. Okay. Which I mean, you could get the mobile solutions piece that for like a hundred bucks, I understand it. Um, but they, they do make one for a hundred bucks. That's what those two guys are. But anyways, there's a clear top on your router that comes off. Uh, if you have a piece of like quarter inch, yeah, you know, and you got a bucket, um, trace it onto a bucket, cut it out, drill the holes, mount your router onto it, turn it on, set it in the bucket. And now you have a router table. Um, that was one of the things that our, our good friend, the mesh man, made uh he made he took a, a five gallon bucket and made a router lift out of it for one of those little cordless routers and it was pretty cool he just did it with some acrylic so I, that's that's the easiest thing i can think of fernando <laughs> what's up he's talking in spanish elias uh i can imagine dean just talking in spanish <laughs> hola there you go there you go that's life, it. life that's, is good that's, you, that's you're what just... you get what's up christian what's up man i don't know why i said that uh christian hey guys what is your preferred method for adding a subwoofer an amp and a 2014 camry non-amplified factory stereo preferred method is pull out that radio and put a new radio in it and doing everything i want after that um I'm not keeping a radio on a 2014 Camry at all. I'm not, I'm not going to spend money on an integration device. That just sounds like a bad idea. Because that car is, is it's no, I'm not, I'm not going to. I mean, there again, because you said preferred. So my preferred method of doing that car is to put some kind of radio in it and anything else I wanted after that. Um, obviously, we want it to sound good, and that would be the best way to achieve that. Shy of that, you know, you're going to like high level low level some amplifiers and just like kind of deal with what it sounds like which i wouldn't you know mm. but you're asking so that's the preferred you put that in there so i'm, yeah. I'm giving you my preferred okay all right what else you got uh let's see no no when installing a component set with four ohm speakers what is the ohm load on the amp? Does it drop to two ohms since the woofer and tweeter are wired in parallel? Well, that's a great question. Funny you should ask. No. the act Okay, so if you're putting in a set of passive speakers with a passive crossover, no, it does not drop the two ohms. The design of the crossover, in part, is to keep the speaker at four ohm. Uh, so, for example... Like at your home stereo speakers, you know, you get a big home stereo and there's like tweeter, tweeter, mid-range, mid-range, you know, and you're like, holy crap. And you get there and it's like eight ohm. And you're like, whoa, wow, that's pretty cool. And a subwoofer. So, no, the passive crossover is designed to retain that ohm load. Now, where does that get kind of funky? Where can that change? That can change if you mess with the tweeter attenuation. So, for example, if you get a passive crossover that has zero plus or minus 3 dB, well... Depending on how that crossover was made, that could screw with the final ohm load because now what you're doing is changing the resistance that the tweeter is now putting out, which will change the final ohm load of the crossover. So, yeah, it, it, it could be good or bad, but that's how that tweeter gets louder is because most crossovers have some form of resistor in it that changes the ohm load of the tweeter dropping it down so you can get that 3 db boost and that will change the final ohm load at the crossover so yeah it will maybe go from four to two you know if you're if you're lucky um but at zero no it should be four ohm 
What's up, buddy? How What's you up doing? What's up to you, Fernando? Larry. Uh, He's the white guy that people think is funny. He's a real estate investor who makes a lot of money. Uh, is it worth running a front sub in the footwell? And what are the benefits? Is it, I, you know, that's something, is it worth it? Is something I really can't decide for you because I don't know what your plans for your stereo are. I will say this. When I was in Austria for the Emma World Finals, there was a lot of guys that were building glove box subwoofers as well as having a subwoofer in the back. And the reason for this is to really land home that upfront base, like just ground it in the front of the car. Uh, if you saw the ARC Audio Cadillac of Brian Mitchell's, his subwoofer is actually in the front of the car. He has a 10 or a 12 in the passenger footwell to ground that upfront base. Just boom, right there. The car he's building at some point, it's going to have two 15s in the front and two 15s in the back. Cause he's crazy he can do that um so if you're if you're competing and you're really trying to to bring that sound up front and have lots of volume for the subwoofer as far as like how much bass you want and still keep it grounded up front i, I would say the benefit is worth it however if you're just like a, a bass head and you're just like no man i just i just like bass i'm gonna be like riding that thing it's just you know it might not be worth it but Yep, so mix a lot. Cracking lots of dollars. We all got gold cruising in this bands and ain't got no place to go. Yeah. <sighs> I know it happens. But yeah, front stage. Yeah. Right. Yes. All right. All right, hold on. Wait, wait. Save that one. Save that uh -huh. one. Okay, save it. I gotta I gotta pull this because here we go, Mr. SQ. Uh it is for SQ. But they won't get as loud as rear subwoofers because the space for front sub is much smaller. But I can it can be hard to blend because it can be localized. All right, so that's from Mr. Jeff Smith, uh, Judge Extraordinaire of Iaska, Emma, and all that other fun stuff. So take that, put it in your pocket. All right, go back to that. Uh, all right. Right there. Okay, Dean. What are your thoughts on twisted pair primary wire for RCA like the ones Bing did? We do it a lot. Not gonna lie, we do it. We do it quite often, actually. It most amplifiers, most amplifiers will take a twisted pair. So as long as the amplifier you're using is a compatible with the twisted pair RCA, then yeah, go for it. And if you want to take it one step further, twist in a third wire like if it's a long run not not short runs but long run you could twist in a third wire and ground it at the back and not at the front and that'll be your drain your noise drain wire um yeah or ground it at the front not at the back i think it's grounded at the front not at the back. either way no i have no problem with it i think it looks sexy as hell so uh but just keep in mind if if you're if you're a single-ended amplifier that's going to need a coax cable, so twisted pair is the wrong idea. Saludos, Luis. Do I have to? Do I have access? Do I? Do I have to access the Sony amp under the console on my F one hundred and fifty two thousand thirteen when adding the ARR? Is all the wiring done behind the dash? Trying to see if I have to pull the console. Guess what? You got to pull the console. Yes, it sucks, but it sucks. That's it. No, it just sucks. Yeah, you got to pull the console. Uh, the whole console has to come back. Uh, the gear shifter, everything just comes out. I mean, you can loosen it up and kind of like lift because on the passenger side is where all your connections are. So, I mean, we just take the console out because it's not that bad. Um, you don't have to take it all apart. A lot of people just start taking it all apart. It's like, no, no, there's like three eight millimeter bolts and some stuff like that. And But you can just loosen, loosen it all up. And if you can get a couple inches so your hands can get underneath on the passenger side, uh, then you can just unplug everything and just like, yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go back. Let's, let's keep that one. I have a 2021 Chrysler 300S. How would I bypass the factory amp to use a five channel amp? Thanks. Uh, you would go over to pack-audio.com and buy the pack 
Amp Pro. Uh, I believe it's the CH41, and now they also make the standalone harness for it to update it to the new 2021 uh, cars, which I believe is a CH31 harness, something like that. Jeff could probably tell us. Yeah. But no, you want to do that, and that will um, that will allow you to get in there and add bypass your factory amp and add in a five channel amp. Here's my thought, though: um, if it has a factory amplified system in that Chrysler 300, you're going to need more than a five channel amp if you're planning on making it sound good. If you just want it loud, great. But dude, that five channel amp is. Uh, or the factory amplifier, I should say, has a CH42. Okay, APCH42. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Um, that's going to have a DSP EQ'd system in it from the factory, meaning it's multi-channel amplifier. There's a channel on the top, doors, rear, eight, nine. There's at least nine to ten channels of amplification in that car from the factory if it's got the amplifier in it. And you're going to pull all that out and put in a five-channel amplifier? To say you might be a little disappointed in the performance, yeah, that's being mild. A lot of people do that, and then they're like, why does it sound like meh? Well, because you took out all the equalization and all the processing that was done. It's going to kick the sound out to the driver's corner, um, unless you're going to put a DSP amplifier in there. And even still, the one that's in there is a 10-channel DSP. So um, that car, if I was putting a 5-channel amp in there, like I would just do a front stage upgrade. I would put the five channels on just the front mid base and tweet or mid range in the dash DSP EQ it up, put a sub be done. But there again, if you're, it depends what your goals are. That's those, that's what we would do in that car. If you're just going to put like, you just want it loud, then a five channel amp will do it. But just, just so you know what you're getting into. Uh, grounded. So back to talking about the upfront base. Should just called in Jeff. Uh, ground it in the front only so it doesn't transmit noise to the, the next. Oh, no, this was talking about making your twisted pair. Thank you. I, I was trying to figure out back or front. It was, it's the front. Ground it to the front. Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. You're the best. You want to change the top one? Yeah, I'm going to because it is that time. Thank you for reminding me. Where, where, am, I, where am I at here? No problem. So we were talking about the twisted pairs. Hey! Mm -hmm. Audio control. Let's talk about audio control for a brief minute here while we have them. They're a proud sponsor of the show. However, it's, what, February in like two days? Hard to believe it, right? It's just flying by. We're already almost into the second month of the year. And before you know it, spring, you'll be like, oh, crap. And then what are you going to do? It's like boat season all over again. Like, oh, my God. Or off-road or whatever where you're like, well, hey, if you didn't know this, audio control last year – came out with brand new ACX amplifiers. These guys right here. They have a new series. They've had the 100 they've had the 300 by 1 and the 300 by 4. But now they have a 300 by 2, a 600 by 6, a 600 by 1 and a 5 channel, the 650. 650. Yeah. Wow, that's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. And these are all put them in a bucket of water amplifiers. These things are just built like tanks. They're like aluminum bricks. Uh, so if you're looking to get your, your boat, your AT, whatever, all set and ready for spring, check out audiocontrol.com. Proud sponsor of the show. That's right. Hey, guys. Quick question. Can you delete the subsonic filter on an audio control LC 1.5? I've seen some exchangeable filters on their site. Asked them, but didn't receive an answer. So those were for their old uh, DSPs and uh, little they had little chips that you could do. Those amplifiers don't have chips in them. Um, hang on, I don't know. I thought you probably can't, let's be honest, because Jeff's over there going, Oh, five thirteen hundred. Did you say the five thirteen hundred? Uh, no, it's a, it's 1500. a fifteen hundred. Sorry, yeah. no, that's okay. It's okay. I get it. All right, so why don't you take a question Why I take a quick peek here. All right, so let me see. <clears throat> All right, um, what to do in a downfire subwoofer in an F-150 2.8 or 110? I'm thinking of 500 watts range. Listen, mostly uh, metal. What would you pick and what subwoofers do you suggest? 
Um, I like two eights. Two eights are nice. Um, but if you're thinking like a 500, you know, one of my favorites, it's the Rockford P310, uh, the T, because actually it's like a wedge. So it goes under the seat. It fits perfectly fine on an F-150, so you can try that. It's 110. It's a power sub, so you don't have to buy another amplifier. Uh, if you want two tens, one then definitely, I don't know. Uh, I love Rockford, Rockford, so two tens, that would be nice. Uh, eight, the P2s. Um, I have one P2, eight, and that was amazing, so... You it's know. an F-150, though. Cabin's a little bigger. I mean, I like yeah. the two tens in the F-150, yeah. personally. Yeah. But, I mean, one ten would be good. It's 500 watts range. So, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Two, two, yeah. Like, like two comp RTs, man. Tens, yeah. Okay, so back to the audio control, 1500.1. The, P- the PFM filter is set to 24 hertz. And it's not... Delitable. It's not turn it off. No, and actually, it's funny. Jeff, Jeff just chimed in, too. Uh, no, you cannot built in board on the mono blocks. That's 24 Hertz. So yeah, no, it is not removable or turn offable. So if you're looking to do that 20 Hertz, you know, can't, can't do it, man. Can't do it. You know, at least they're, at least they tell what would you, you, what would you do? Well, I'm thinking, you know, the funny thing is how many amplifiers actually do something like that that don't even mention it? I think that's more the funny part is that a lot of these amplifiers probably have, you know, uh, that. And they're just like, yeah, we don't need to tell anybody. We just don't want blown subs. <laughs> yeah. uh, my F-150 uses a T-harness to connect to my D5-1300. Should I switch to a pack audio product or would you just create any work. work and expense for myself? Thanks, guys. Um, it depends. Okay, so I mean, if we're just looking for a pack audio T harness, no. I mean, is it is it the basic F one fifty? I mean, I'm I'm guessing. Scott, is it? Does it have a? It's, I'm I'm guessing it's just a basic F one fifty. Like you, you yeah. don't have a Sony or a, a um, right B O yeah. system or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if if that's the case, no. A D five thirteen hundred is perfectly fine. Uh, T harness, plug it in. You're you're good to go. If it the the only thing that you could add to the non premium is actually an R A R harness for my data, uh, and that would connect in and allow you to reflash the radio, shut off the EQ from the factory, and take it down to four volts of variable input. Is it worth it? Like, are you gonna like? Oh my God! If you're one of those guys that just like. Stuff like that keeps you up at night, yeah. But if you're not, no. So, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I know, right? Hold on, let me just click that right there. Uh, how do you set your gains on a factory head unit uh, using LC2i Pro as your lock? Twenty twenty fifth gen RAM. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Do you turn? Volume up 75 or max and set LSC till you get four volt coming out of RCS. Um, so here's here's the problem with, with that car and, and setting your gains properly is that car is gonna have base roll off. So even at 75%, uh, it still may sound too boomy. Um and you know, if you look at it on an RTA, you're gonna see where it's like it's the whole like 40 hertz may be way down here and like 80 hertz could be 12 dB above that. And so you're going to get in there, and it's going to be like beating. You're going, oh, my lights didn't come on. And it's not this, you know, my thing isn't stored. So w- w- when setting a factory, like, you know, using the factory radio, obviously not having an RTA, something like an IRTA2 or something like that, you can actually see what the heck is going on. There is no, like, you need to do this. So you, 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 you kind of have to use, a little bit of common sense on that one and don't just expect it to go the way you're hoping. Um, you may also want to do just 5 dBs of overlap instead of 10 dB um, and just kind of... Hey, Donald. Uh, just kind of pay attention to it and don't put faith in the meters. Trust your ears. 
Um, so if you're like, man, you know, I, I started turning the dials and the lights weren't coming on. So I kept turning it up and turning up. No, 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 no. There, there's something else going on there. Like you're, you're using a frequency that, that isn't working. What you may want to do, uh, like I know kicker likes to use 50, but, um, play tones. So play like 40, 50, 60, 70, and just see where it's, where it's coming from as you're, as you're turning up the game and keep in mind, the other thing too, especially with the with those, is when you turn it down, the bass is going to be pounding because it has bass roll off. In a 2020 Ram, the, the best thing to do is get a high amplifier, any kind of high amplifier, and do an amp pro, uh, and reflash the radio, and that'll take off your bass roll off, your equalization, all the crap that's going to make it hard to do this and give you a solid preamp output. Any small four channel amp to power everything back up or eight channel, anything. I don't know. But when setting that gain, and so the cool thing about the Amp Pro is that it will flash the non amplified or amplified. So if a, amp, a non amplified system, it will reflash the radio and make it amplified. That's why you need that small four channel amplifier to power back up the mids and highs because you can't use your deck power. But any small four channel amplifier to power those back up is well worth it. Um, as opposed to doing LCE2i Pro, money goes to the same cause. But, yeah. Okay. I don't know if that made any sense, but I tried. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Give me something else. When you using a Pioneer head unit, do you set your DSP amp to play all the way up to 40 volume level? DSP uh, Pioneer head unit? No. Pioneer head units clip out at about 38. 38. So that's going to be your max level for that particular radio. Um, there again, depending on where you go. So 38 is going to be where the radio distorts. So something after that, you know, 5 or 10 dB, depending on what you're setting up, is, is going to give you some room uh, for other music. Uh, you may be able to turn it up to 40, depending on what type of music you're listening to. But if you're playing a... Test tone output, 38 is where that radio clips out. When you find an all-pass filter, what is the options for solving if there will be no time alignment? Leave it alone. Just leave it alone. If you're not, if you're, if you're not going to be doing time alignment, the all-pass filter really isn't a problem for you. So the idea behind why we're using all-pass fil filters is to, like a manufacturer, why do they use all-pass filters? It's, it's a cheap way to steer the sound and give you some imaging in the car. That's, that's all it does. So if you're just not going to be doing any time delay, you're just going to be doing some equalization, leave it alone. Let it do its thing. It'll keep doing it. It's not going to hurt your EQ. It's not going to hurt the way it sounds. It will keep the set. Like if you're sitting in the car, and you play the, from the factory, and it's like, oh, wow, it kind of kind of doesn't sound like it's coming from the corner. It kind of sounds like it may be above the steering wheel or, or maybe over farther. Who knows? Um, if you leave it in there and just tune the car, it will go back to it. It'll still do that. If you negate it, it's just going to throw all the sound into the corner, you know, which could really suck. And the guy's going to go, too, what you do my stuff? What well, sounds worse? You know, so typically you don't, you don't, you don't have to bypass an all-pass filter. So you can just leave it there. It's it's not going to hurt anybody. Just it's okay. I mean, there's plenty of times where we just leave it alone. Do your thing, Mister All Pass Filter. Do your thing. They're not all bad. Uh, 2016 GMC Sierra. Would you guys suggest an Amp Pro GM61 or the Access DSP? The Access is cheaper and includes full DSP. But how easy is it to set up DIY? Is it hard to set up? Any DSP could be hard to set up, especially if you have no idea what you're doing and there's a bunch of sliders. Go to town. Um, we use the GM61 for that particular install. That's all we've ever used, either that or the Zen, when the Zens are, were available and those weren't. But I've never used that particular piece in that car. Um, most of the time, I want a, I'm not going to say a better DSP, but I want a better DSP. Uh, the other thing too, to keep in mind now that it's 2016 GMC Sierra, uh, I'm guessing it has bows. So that's probably want to keep because it has the eight inch screen. Mm, okay. Cause I was also going to say, um, you have the high 10 kit from amp 
that can go in there and look super sexy. Mm -hmm. Like they sell a dash kit for it that flushes in that 10 inch high 10. And you know, it's an eight year old car, modern features. Mm, just saying it's pretty sexy carplay android auto set just, you, you know, set. Big eq it's, it's pretty nice yes pose yeah pose but you're gonna bypass it anyway so i mean the high 10 there you go um i have four speakers rated at 40 watts rms each if i can't find an amp rated for 40 watts rms per channel should i go with an amp rated at 30 watts per channel or 50 watts per channel what's the best option Probably the most popular size four channel amplifier, as you found out, is 50 watts. 40 watts RMS is just kind of like a, it's a stupid, like RMS is stupid. Okay. It's just there to make you kind of like, all right, I'm not going to put, you know, 120 watts on a speaker that says RMS 40 watts. People still do it, but no, 50, 50 watts is fine. 50 watts will, will, will get you where you need to be. Um, keep in mind, a lot of the times manufacturers, don't take in consideration crossovers when they're giving you those ratings. It's like you're going to be, you know, if, if you're going to be using a crossover and limiting the performance of the driver, it's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, then you can obviously put a little bit more power to it, a lot more power, uh, because it's not going to be trying to produce like frequencies below 80 hertz. Whereas if it is trying to produce frequencies below 80 hertz, well, that definitely makes it harder for it to do and will take less power so you don't blow up the speaker. Sometimes it's hard to make sense of these questions. Yeah? I'm just saying. What else we got? All right. So I think we have a local here. Hey, Fernando. Hey, Local Florida on? boy here. My wife has a 2011 Camry. Uh, have amps, etc. in car. Need receiver with steering wheel controls that won't glitch. Out like the Link app. Uh, app, app, yeah, link Apple. Well, okay, glitch app. Um, Apple two, CarPlay? I don't know. It just says link Apple. Well, I don't know what that means. I'm just, I'm just Either way, it's 2011 it. Toyota Camry. Uh, you're going to want an iData RR harness for integration. Yep. Uh, you're going to want a radio that works with iData RR. Uh, any Alpine makes one, Kenwood makes one, Sony makes them, Pioneer makes them. Everyone makes one that'll do that that are reasonably priced. Uh, if you want the most, you can head over to iData mm -hmm. or maestro.com and type in your make, model, and year, and it'll give you recommendations for radios that from each one of those brands yep. that will work best in your car, and it'll give you the option for different features and stuff like that. But, yeah, any, any one of those. Um, if, if, if Okay, I'm going to make one recommendation. Um, if she doesn't want to get deep into the radio, she just likes volume up and down, she wants it to sound good, take a look at Sony. Okay, Sony makes really easy to use, good sounding radios. Yeah, I was thinking Links Well too, Jeff. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Links Well. Somehow it got Apple in there. Links Well. Yeah, I was thinking Links Well. I just drop out the Apple. You got Links and Well. So I don't know because it's a Links Well. Yeah. That. Yeah. No. T style radios. No. Yes, sir. Links well. It's right here, dude. He actually responded. Yeah, links yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Sony, check it out. Boom. All right. So, uh, totally lost one. Okay. There you go. Find it. Hello, Dean and Fernando. I'd like to know what tool do you use to set DSP amp use to set a DSP amplifier with gain level playing from a head unit? Digital multimeter, oscilloscope, or DD1? Well, most of the time, the amplifiers we're using have some form of distortion detector built into them. Mm -hmm. um, so we're good there. Like Otherwise, it's just going to be we're looking at the RTA and seeing what's happening. You know, it's, uh, you know, yeah, we're, gonna, we're trying to make sure you get all the watts, man. All the watts? All the watts. All the gigawatts. I'm going to say this before we answer that question. Uh, remember that one time when we were in Indy? No. You do. Shh, shh. You're in Indy. And Sage goes, I bet you nobody in this room can get up and dial this amplifier into 5 dBs of overlap. And your friend and mine, Mr. Jeff Smith, got up and dialed that sucker in by ear to 5 dBs. It was like 6 dBs of overlap. 
Yeah, that was crazy. And then sat down, dropped the mic and sat down. And Sage yeah. was like, well, not everyone's as smart as Jeff. <laughs> a lot of people are. No, they're not. Anyways, my point is, is that, you know, yeah, yeah it, it can be that. done. It can be done. It's magical. Well, I mean, of course it can be done. You just got to call Jeff Smith. No, whatever. All the watts, all the frequencies. Oh, yeah, man. It's just I, I don't feel like I'm getting shortchanged. You know, I want it to sound the best that it can. And if you want to book your appointment, please call 1-800-JEFF with two new car. And uh, <laughs> yes. I'm broke till I pay off the Sony GS9. Oh, for no sure. No kidding. Me too. Uh, question. How do I wire the emergency brake wire from my Pioneer DMH100BT to my... 2005 F1 F250. Um, I mean, personally, I would just go to microbypass.com and buy the micro bypass and just call it a day. However, if you're actually looking to do that, uh, an emergency brake is going to have a one wire going to it. That's it. It's mm -hmm. a ground. Um, and on the Pioneer, what it needs to see is when the ignition turns off, it needs to start in the off position. And it goes on, off, on, and that will activate the bypass inside of the radio and allow you to access whatever features you try to access the micro bypass is a product that actually emulates that mm -hmm. so that you don't ever have to do it so if you're trying to get into like set the clock backup cameras whatever all those bluetooth features that are stuff, yeah you know that yes yeah, bluetooth stuff for sure then you it'll just do it for you i definitely um, recommend you to go and get the bypass i don't recommend anything i'm just telling you where you can get it if no, you want to do it go do it but yeah Hey, um, before we uh, go, uh, what do we got? We got a couple more. Yes. All right, so. One more. Right here. Do it bump, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the polarity on my passenger side dash front door speakers are reversed from the factory. Am I swapping the front speakers with a component set? Should I keep it reversed or make everything match? I'm guessing you got a Chrysler maybe of some kind or possibly a Toyota. And it's actually, if you're testing it with a polarity tester, it's probably not improperly, it's probably right. It's prop, The problem is, is the all-pass filter is right at the frequency that the polarity tester is popping at. And it will pop it funky. Leave it alone. So what, you, what you're going to do is don't, don't switch anything. Don't, don't get crazy. Don't do anything. When you're replacing your speakers, test the speaker. So pull the speaker out. Test it. Make sure that, you know, if, if every clip in the car left is positive, every clip in the car when you're done, left stays positive. What I mean by left is if you're looking at the plug, there's always like a top and a bottom. And if this side is always the positive side or the negative side, make sure all of them are identical. OK, um, if, the, if the tweeter goes that tweeter, they're, they're never going to be different. Manufacturers never switch because it's always the same speaker. So hook it up exactly the way they do from the factory. Okay, yeah. and leave it at that. If you try, start trying to flip it and twist it, it's going to sound terrible because, like I said, um, the popping could be coming from the filter that's in there from the factory, and all the other frequencies are fine. It's just that one that inverts. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Is 10 dBs too high of an input gain on a DM810 using a Pioneer RC output? Probably not. No, probably not. Yeah, you're probably okay. But the A10 has the input lights on it, so I'm guessing they're never coming on, and if they aren't, you're fine. And even if they are, if it's only doing it at really high volumes, as long as you know what it's doing and play different songs and see what's happening and look at the lights, you're fine. It's not going to hurt anything. But um, depending on the Pioneer, the Pioneer will only have two volts of output, so yeah, you may need to... To, to, to what? To go? Um... Yeah. So yeah. hang on. Let me let me let me do something here real quick. Uh, because you guys have been asking, you guys have caught on the show. Hide the current comment. You guys have been asking on the show, like, hey, uh, what are those ferrule crimpers that you guys keep using for the four gauge? And I'm like, I've been kept telling you, just just be patient. I'm gonna put up a a link on Finally. the DNF tool drawer. So because our class is this weekend, uh, <laughs> you know, if you go if you head over to DNF tool drawer and you scroll down to this bottom right here where it says Modern wire tech, yeah. Modern wire techniques, sure. Modern wire techniques, that's it. Oh, yeah, yep. Well, you click on it, just click on the yellow thing in the bottom corner. This has all the fun stuff that we're going to be doing in this class. And if you come over here to these guys right here that? with the orange handles and click on those, 
Those, my friends, are the crippers we were using for four gauge ferals. That's them. That's the bad boys right there. As you can see, I don't know what the heck that's doing. Uh, as you can see, they're like 27 bucks. They're extremely reasonable. Um, but that's them. So if you head over to the NF tool drawer, bottom right hand corner, click on the yellow tab, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to order yourself a set. You know, let's break Amazon. Everyone go out right now and buy your $27 four gauge wire barrel crimpers. DNF tool drawer. Dot com. Very good. Dot com. Don't do the Dayton DSP. That sounds like that. We have a wow. leader. You know that leaders furniture commercials. Don't do it. Just do it. This, like ain't, this ain't Nike, man. This Just ain't like Nike. Nike. Just do it. <laughs> do I need an LC2i Pro to add a Rockford Fosgate P312 inch to a 2019 Genesis G70 with Lexicon factory radio? I was told I could tap the factory sub at the amp. Oh, you can tap it for sure if you want to launch the input of that amplifier. No. that Okay, so here's the thing. It's real easy to test if you're going to need this or not. That amplifier will take up to 10 volts of input. That's it, 10 volts of input. How do you test for that? All right, so get yourself a tone generator or download a tone you know, onto your phone, uh, on a thumb drive, whatever. Put a 40 hertz test tone. You want a 40, a 50, 60, and a 70 hertz test tone. All right, you need a buddy, and you need a digital multimeter. All right, and what you're going to do is you're going to go back to the subwoofer, you're going to take your digital multimeter, red and black, and you're going to shove them in there. Positive, negative, doesn't matter. Just put one on right, one on left. Fill both holes. Turn your digital multimeter to AC, not DC, AC. Play that 40 hertz test tone at the volume that you're going to be playing your stereo at. Don't, like, all the way up, because that's how you're going to do it. Don't pussyfoot around, man. Okay. You only got to do this, and then you can turn it down. Your buddy in the back, or if you have a digital multimeter that'll do hold, uh, max hold, set it to max hold, boom. Do 40 hertz, go back there, see what the voltage is. If it's below 10 volts, cool. Go to 50, do the same thing. If it's below 10 volts, do 60. If it's below 10 volts, do 70. If they all stay below 10 volts, and I mean nine and a half is cool, then no, you can go right out of most amplifiers, the P300 included, tap on, and you're done. However, if it goes above 10 volts, mm -hmm. that particular device cannot handle that amount of signal coming into it. At that point, yes, you're going to need some form of a high-level to low-level adapter. Now, do you need an LC2i Pro? Probably not. You just get away with an LC1i would do the trick because it's a subwoofer output. Um However, you may also want to look like at the epicenter micro because you don't know with, without an RTA, you don't know what that signal looks like. So, you know, you might want to have some fun. Wait, what am I saying? No, don't do the epicenter micro. Not on that. I got carried away. My bad. I got carried away. Yeah. That has punch base. If I was doing that LC1I, you're all set. If, if it's above 10 volts, don't do an epicenter micro. Please, God, not on that. Sorry. My bad. I got excited. Okay. Moving on. Uh, what's your favorite head unit right now? I still like the 1057 from Kenwood. Yeah. I, I, I just I like the 1057. There's nothing wrong with the 901 from Sony. It's a it's a it's a it's a great piece, mm -hmm. but I haven't gotten as intimate with it as I have the 1057. So I have to go with that. But I mean it's one of those two. It's one of those two. I'm I'm yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm making love with one of those. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, it happens. Uh, local Fort Mars, can I run six and a half inch speakers on uh, front doors of an F 350 diesel truck 2001 and five and a quarters? Nando, say you? Uh, it's a five and a quarter in the front. I think so. I think we put a six and a half in there. Uh, Jesus truck. If it was, it was thin though, we went with the, the KS kickers. No. Yes. We put the um, KS kickers. Ah, uh, the melees. You sure? I think yeah. we have the KS. No, we put the melees in there. Um, sure, I, that wasn't in the Chevy. No, that was a Ford. No, was, dude, I'm telling you, the Ford we did the KS, man. No. I'm telling you the Ford. Okay, oh, all right, all right. Um, you're right. Hey, you know more than me. Yes. Uh, well, your memory is no, way better than mine. So yes, for sure. 
yeah, six and a half would, would fit in there. Uh, you probably have to get like a really like like a spacer, uh, quarter inch, but yeah. Um, so I like this question. Does the epicenter increase stress on the sub? Yeah, yeah, of course. Huh? I mean, it's an EQ at the end of the day. It's some form of it's a boost. So anytime you're adding boost, you add stress. Now, is, is it bad stress? Because, you know, the doctors always say there's good stress and bad stress, just like there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. I don't know what yeah. the hell that means. Yeah. Um, but it, it adds stress. There's no doubt about it. it. The idea is still, listen, every time someone brings in a car, we sit in the car and we listen to it, I tell you the same thing. When it sounds like shit, turn it down. That's exactly what I say to them. When it no longer sounds the way it's supposed to, when you hear funny things happening, you turn it down. Epicenter is no different. You know, if you're playing something and it just doesn't sound right, turn it down or turn the effect down. That's all you got to do. The, the biggest reason why people blow their stuff is they think that the, because they spent money on it, they, they, have a, they have control over the destiny of this product and it should bend to my will. You're going to Thanos up on that bitch. No, the reality is, is it's not. It, it, they're only capable of doing this. And if it blows, that's because you asked it to do something you couldn't. And there was probably a clue there when you were playing it that was like, huh. You know, I keep turning it up and it's not getting any louder. I wonder why. Well, because it can't do anymore. Well, I should keep trying, though. Yeah, you just no, go just keep trying. And then the smoke comes out of it. And you're like, oh, I don't know what happened. I wasn't playing it that loud. Yeah, you were. You were playing it way too loud. For yeah. it, not for you. Because remember, it only will do what it can do. That might not be enough for you. So you need more might power. need more. Need the headrooms. Under five minutes left. Okay. Ooh. I know. All right. Last question. Uh, when completing an install, do you allow speakers to play a while to break in before tuning? My sound changed after a few days of play. Yes, your sound will change. However, the characteristics of the speaker shouldn't go like that far away from where they're at. Uh, sometimes they get weird, but most of the time they don't. When we're done playing a car, we typically, our tuning session for a car is typically about two and a half hours, two and a half, three hours. And then if we have time after that, we're still sitting in the car playing it. So we make sure the speakers are nice and hot and toasty before we deliver the car. Um, okay. So... Yeah. Now, some speakers, the more expensive ones, only get better. Like, you'll tune a car, and it'll sound great, and then, you know, they'll come back. Uh, like, Brett came back. He's like, dude, oh, it my sounds, God. It sounds yeah. so much. So it's much just, better. like, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, that's, that's what's supposed to happen. So, you know, yeah, yeah. It's usually a good thing. I mean, it got to be. As Martha, you know? said, Martha Stewart says, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, all right, so we talked about DNF Tool Drawers, a place you can go and find all the cool tools that we use. Yes. And, of course, the bottom right-hand corner now will get you to find the cool uh, crimpers that you guys are looking for. If you're going to be at Knowledge Fest this weekend, that's right, Knowledge Fest is this weekend in Vegas, or you're just in Vegas, we're going to be at the Paris mm -hmm. all weekend. We'll be at the Paris. Uh, if, if you're in Vegas and you want to stop by and say hi, by all means, Come into the Paris, look for large people, large groups of people that have car stereo shirts on, or getting probably more consume consumption of alcohol than they need to uh we'll probably be among them um or if you're friends with us on facebook text one of us and we'll be like we're over here but yeah feel free to stop by the paris if you like at nighttime you can come see us now if you are going to knowledge fest make sure sunday you come to our class on the showroom floor we'll be teaching it three times because once is never enough and or Friday or Saturday, head over to the morale booth we'll be hanging out talking morale stuff we're also doing a morale training on friday uh, for those of you guys that can't go to that because, well, you're not going to Knowledge Fest, have no fear. We did a great video on what the class is about. So when we get back, we'll be able to release that video. And also, we're giving away some custom swag. Uh, stay tuned to Instagram. I think tomorrow I'll be posting a picture of the cool logo we designed for their shirt. Natasha has told me that uh, once this is all over, we'll do a giveaway on some of the T-shirts. So yeah. that some of you guys will be able to get some of the cool Morel five-star T-shirts. Uh, as well as the cool lanyards that we created for them as well. So it's a lot of fun. But that's it. That's the show for the week, guys. That's all you're going to see us in the install bay. You might see us on Instagram tomorrow and the day after. We'll talk about what we got going on in this Toyota, possibly. Um, yeah. But other than that, 
you're going to see it next time you guys see us here on these channels. We'll be in Vegas. That's it. Doing Vegas things. What that's what you do. Things? You do yeah. Vegas things. Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> you guys have a great rest of your week. Thank you so see much Jason, for watching Bye, as Larry. always. You guys are the best. See you next time. Bye, guys. Fading to black. Really? I'm going to try. Okay.